Welcome to the video solution of the exercise whole bar. The whole bar geometry is used to characterize the electronic properties of a two-dimensional electron gas that is for example within a heterostructure. In the problem set we are given the schematic of such a whole bar. It has a width W and a separation L between the longitudinal voltage probe contacts. The voltages Uy as well as Ux are determined in a four terminal measurement. Therefore contact resistances of the probes to the sample have a negligible influence on the measurement results. In the whole board geometry a voltage source provides a current through the structure that is basically determined by this 10 mega ohm resistor which is much larger than the resistance of the sample. There are several quantities given in the problem set which are the effective mass, the longitudinal voltage drop as well as the geometric quantities L and W. First we are asked to calculate the resistance R of the electron gas as well as the specific resistivity rho. As I already mentioned, the 10 mega ohm resistor is much larger than the sample resistance. Therefore, the current is obtained as 1 volt over 10 mega ohms being 0.1 microamps. By using Ohm's law again we obtain the longitudinal resistance between the voltage probes Rxx, Sux over I and as ux is given, we, op we, we uh, get um, 100 ohms as the result. Now we also ask to calculate the geometry independent um, resistivity, which is given as rxx being rho xx times w over l and this is 50 ohms. So note the unit of the resistivity. Um, this would be different in 3D, so for three-dimensional um, system the unit of the resistivity is ohms per meter, whereas in our case for 2 deck, the unit is ohms, so it depends on the dimensionality of the system that is considered. For the next part of the exercise, a non-zero magnetic field is applied perpendicular to the sample. So for this situation of non-zero field, a hall angle theta forms between the current density J and the electric field, which is perpendicular to the equipotential lines. So um, this Hall angle gives rise to a non-zero Hall voltage Uy, which is um, measured as Uy being 210 microvolts for a magnetic field of one Tesla. Now the question is to calculate the electron sheet density using this information of the hole measurement. In order to do this we can use the truth model um, which is based on um, the classical equation of motion for diffusive electron transport uh, within the structure. Within the truth model, the transverse resistance Rxy 
um, is given uh, with this equation here. So Rxy is equal to rho xy, um, which is just the uh, transverse voltage drop uy over the current um, through the system. And now within the truth model, this is given as the magnetic field over the electron sheet density times the electron charge. So we can solve that equation for the sheet density ns being 2.9 times 10 to the 11 electrons per square centimeter. Now in the third part of the exercise, we are asked to calculate the electron mobility, the true scattering time, as well as the mean free path of the electrons at the Fermi energy. Now, by again using the truth model, we can express the longitudinal resistance of the whole bar. It is given as this term here, um, where we can now identify the electron mobility mu being e times tau over m star. So that's the definition of the mobility. And we can plug that in here, um, such that we obtain one over e times mu times ns. So we can directly solve this um, to obtain mu equals one over rho xx times ns times e, which is about 430,000 centimeter squared per volt seconds. From the definition of the mobility and our result here, um, we can write down the expression for the scattering time, tau being mu times m star over e equal to about 16 picoseconds. Now, um, as the last question, we are asked to calculate the mean free path of electrons um, at the Fermi energy. And uh, we can write that, first of all, in the, in the following general form. This is basically um, a classical equation where the electron mean free path L is just given as a product of the Fermi velocity times the scattering time. And we can now express the Fermi velocity as h bar kf over the electron mass and plug this in to this equation here. And now we're also going to use the result um, for rho xx um, from the truth model, so this term here, to replace the tau such that we get h bar kf over me times one over rho xx me over ns e squared. And um, now um, we also want to replace the um, Fermi wave vector kf. And for this, we use the fact that um, the number of electrons below an um, energy E being occupied for an isotropic system is equal to pi times k of E times two over two pi over L squared. So the electron density and S is given as kf over two pi. So one just divides um, this n of e um, over l, giving the density at the Fermi energy, we have 
kf. So we get this equation from the equation here. And we can now plug this in to our equation for the electron mean free path such that we obtain h over e squared 1 over rho xx 1 over square root 2 pi times ns and this is about 3.8 micron. So um, as you can see this mean free path is much less than the extent of the whole bar meaning that uh, we are in the diffusive transport regime.